Good afternoon and welcome to our time of reflection on Good Friday as we take time out and pause at the foot of the cross. We're using reflections taken from the Wild Goose resources, that, that is from the Iona community. And I recommend that at the end of each narrative, uh, you pause the recording and spend time with God in your own thoughts and reflections. I will say, please pause at those moments. To be here for an hour, you would need to leave approximately 10 minutes in between the audio recordings. But the timing is, of course, entirely yours. The audio narrative follows a series of images that I hope may aid us as we think of the world and as we think of Christ's suffering. And so let us begin our time at the foot of the cross. Luke chapter 22 verses 39 to 45. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. Legend says that while the Apostles slept in the Garden of Gethsemane, Mary and Martha were awake, watching and praying at the Garden Gate. At Gethsemane, the skirts of light grew wider in the immense dark, revealing watchers at the gate. The women there watching, seeing, awake, waiting without interfering, quiet in their humble love. While sleeping men no longer attend, the women focus wholly on the depths of human experience. Helpless, baffled, marginalised, with a precious generosity they minister with eyes and ears. They are waiting with patient attention for the insight not yet given, waiting and never relinquishing. The ability to feel, never losing the capacity for compassion or the strength to hope, waiting and holding on to their vision, forever at the gate, forever ready. But the story won't let us stay in the garden. We must follow. Matthew chapter 27 verses 27 to 31. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him 
and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Please press pause for as long as you wish to or need to. Mark chapter 15 verse 22 Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. Here where three crosses are stark against the sky, where people come and go, in malice, cruelty and abject desolation, is no place or time for objectivity, no place for reason or logic. Here is humanity stripped bare, vulnerable. See the human story. It's written on a body that has been kissed and anointed with love and sweet perfume has eaten bread and wine and washed feet. Look, blood and excretia, sweat and spit, flesh and tissue fragility, a life, a human body, brutalised, contorted and distorted, spit upon, rejected. Don't avert your gaze, close your heart, or hide in familiar washed and perfumed language with comforting doctrines. Here our elaborate theologies clank like empty buckets. There is no high purpose or meaning to human cruelty, the killing of innocent people. All this brokenness all this devastation of what is most precious. Life isn't about meaning. It's about connections, reaching out, not reaching up. There is no religious or moral rule to equal the demands of love. Look, see. Hold on to the messiness and brokenness, the wholeness of body and spirit. God of all love and every truth, help us to look with open eyes, to see with open hearts. Paying attention attending to all people and all things in their mystery, depth and ordinariness, in the essence of prayer, the rarest and purest form of generosity. If you turn away, if you look for angels or some worldly sign, if you separate body and mind, then and only then can you rationalise this or any other atrocity, the newspapers report today. Violence, abuse, oppression. From Guantanamo Bay to Iraq, from Defour to Zimbabwe, from Israel, Palestine to our own backyards and COVID-19. Nor is this a place for romantics, a sanitised crucifixion with clean, unbloodied body. It's a place of evil, a place of too much destruction. Humankind cannot stand too much reality, and yet the demanding common task is to look and to love and cry, Mercy! Our serious looking has a healing beauty. In loving attention is enabling grace that tunes us into the heart-rending harmony of life and death. God of all love and every truth, 
Help us to look with open eyes. See with open hearts. Please press pause for as long as you wish to or need to. Mark, chapter 15, verses 33 and 34. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That huge why held deep inside us all, or spat out occasionally, isn't an intellectual question. It's a cry of agony. There are no answers. Only the waiting, the walking alongside, the being here. Only the giving out of what we do not have. The love that comes as we give it. The incredible risk of love demands more of us than easy answers and pretty prayers. Luke, chapter 23, verse 49. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Mary, at the foot of the cross, waits to hold her dead son in her arms. Who would dare to look into her secret eyes? Who now would dare to sing Magnificat? Her still body is the shape of a multitude of grieving women. Death does not dry her tears. They wash over history into the places Words will never reach. Woman without comfort or consolation, she keeps a timeless vigil for nameless mothers and their missing sons and daughters. For all who pick up the pieces, who collect the wounded, who bring home the dead, and wait for bread to feed the living. There will always be the waiting. Waiting with the dying. Waiting at the bedside of a sick child. Waiting at a peace vigil. Waiting for news of missing sons and daughters, husbands and wives, mothers or fathers. Waiting amid illness, abuse, oppression. Waiting at the gates, waiting at the place of desolation, the human rubbish dump. But there will always be the watching, 
the standing alongside through the long night, preparing food for the weary, caring for the children, encouraging with a word, a smile, a hug, presence and compassion, not ministering to, but being with. Please press pause for as long as you wish to or need to. Some women of the company watch with the angels from their own place, somewhere at the margins, where bread and wine, spices and perfumes, loving and caring flow freely where they mourn and cry for children living now and yet to be born. Where seeing into the heart of all things is by the clear light beyond death. So that the margins are becoming a new centre. Hopes and dreams, men call foolish nonsense, are leading not to chapel or church, temple or synagogue, but to the foot of a cross. To wonder at a story ordinary enough to live by. To wait silently for men to outgrow their madness and the sun to rise again. Waiting is a sign, a living poem. Waiting carries the needs of the people quietly within. They also serve who only stand and wait. Weep over injustice, rejoice in goodness, love outrageously. Let uncertainty flow on the stillness of our bodies. For we know not what we do, nor what we can do. God of all love and every truth, help us to look with open eyes, to see with open hearts. Please press pause for as long as you wish to or need to. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. We are stretched between the motionless point we watch, the cry of humanity, and the common task to make a better world. Never turning away from suffering, always able to see what is and imagine how things could be different. Holding hands with those who wait, family, friend, stranger, and some from whom we might recoil. We seek words good enough to tell a story to live by. 
Words like love, fragility, vulnerability, uncertainty and solidarity. These tell of God, of selfless acts that free and transform, of ordinary people around the world forming co-ops, campaign groups, self-help groups, organising protests and peace marches, seeking an end to poverty, oppression, social marginalisation and environmental devastation. We wait and look again, not so much at what we believe, but how we see, hear and understand what it means to be alive and open to that which is deepest within us, that which responds to life, that which responds with all our being to other people and the world around us in its joy and in its agony. There is at large in the world amazing imaginative power to reinvent ourselves, to remake the world. We know we are in the dark, but perhaps that's a good place to be, a good place from which to tell of ongoing and energising hope and love strong enough to banish fear and bear regrets. What do we expect to achieve? We don't know. Waiting at the foot of the cross is being on the edge of something not quite revealed. We are still in the dark, but hope isn't about expectations. As the Jesus stories show us, it is about surprises. Surprise. Dandelions on dung heaps, daisies in stone walls the long goodwill of the damp-floored forest where old leaves nurture new trees and the hopeful energy of creativity's seedbed nourishes the silent outrage of spring. These chip away at petrified logic and play with reason's straitjacket, outgrow the private, make me face my own name as if it belongs somewhere else, make me lose myself in the huge surprise of life in the jack-in-the-box, head-over-heels world of multicoloured movement that outbursts the first and every I love you. Transformation begins with people of love, discernment, joy, hope, with compassion as the only way to grow. The earth is waiting, in the caring and the waiting, we are one with all growing living things, people in the dark who feel the coming of the dawn. Thank you for being with us as we shared time at the foot of the cross. I hope and pray that that has aided your reflections, your consideration of what Christ has done for us as we travel through this holy weekend and come to celebrate on Easter Sunday. But for now, may you know God's peace and his great blessing on you and those you love this day and always. Amen.